Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and recently I did a video on why game masters should use pre-made adventure modules, which wasn't actually aimed at why they should run adventure modules, but it was more geared towards uh, using them for idea mines or trying out different methods and styles of playing. And several commenters brought up how they do find modules intimidating to run or other issues that they've encountered that discourage them from using pre-made adventure modules, which these all echo different statements that I've received on different comments on the module reviews that I've been posting now for the past couple years. So what we're going to talk about in this video is how to run an adventure module, or more specifically, how I run an adventure module. Now, my method works great for me. I've had years of being able to hone it, but we're all different, so so this isn't going to work best for everybody. Much like how all players out there are different, modules are all going to be different too. So the specific method does change a bit on a case-by-case -case basis is what the module is. So I'm going to have to approach this with very general steps, kind of an overview general steps. Now this is a lot like modules, how they have to approach things with very general steps as well, such as opening scenes, because the writer of the module has no idea of all the specifics of your game group. Now all this is to say is that my suggestions, like modules, modules themselves require that a game master adapt them for the circumstances that they have and not stick to it by the letter. Now, not all modules are good, and many of them are frankly terrible. Some modules might be a staggering work of brilliance, but they're just not compatible with your group or your players or something like that on any number of reasons. But any module that you run is going to require work from you as the game master in order for it to be run successfully. So, let's say that you have a module, either you've read the reviews for it, or you caught up on all the hype for it, or you just picked it up on a whim because you found it in a used bookstore, or whatever it is, you have a module. Now, I approach this the same way that a player character approaches a Mythos Tome in a Call of Cthulhu game, because I've got a few steps that I go through, and the first step that I use is the initial skim. Now, this one is usually pretty quick. I flip through the module, I read the summary, I look at the stats, I oogle all the pretty pictures, and I try to get just what a decent impression about what this module is and what it's about, and this whole step doesn't take very long. From there, the adventure gets dropped into one of several categories. One, not workable. It might be good for stealing a few ideas later on, but it's not any adventure that I want to run. It could be that it's a bad module, or it could be that it just doesn't fit with me or my players on some fundamental level. Many well-loved and many award-winning modules might fall into this category, and if you read it and you rule it out as something you want to run, it is probably best for you and everyone at your gaming table that you just put it aside and not run it at all. Don't ever run a module that you don't see you and your players as enjoying. Just don't do it. Now, maybe at a future date, years down the road, you might pick at this module again and decide that, no, whatever was wrong with your group at the time that didn't quite mesh with it, that has passed, or maybe you have changed as a game master, your players have changed as players, or something like that. At that point, you can revisit it, decide to run it, and have fun. But don't ever force yourself to run some sort of adventure that you don't envision yourself having a good time with, and if you don't have a good feeling about it, act on that. Number two, needs work. This means I am going to have to rework some portions of it, maybe streamline it a bit. Maybe it's a great adventure, but just not suited for our group at this exact moment, but it's definitely worth keeping in mind for a future date. Or three, the rarest of them all, let's do it. Sure, there's still going to be some work that has to be done with it, but on the overall, this scenario is perfect for my players and I, as well as whatever our current campaign is, and I am looking forward to playing this one. Whatever module that you choose is going to be coming out of Categories 2 or 3 is what it is you want to run. Now, the rest of the steps are all going to be the same. It just depends, changes the intensity of which the other steps are going to be involved with, depending on how ready this module is for you to run, just based off what you find between the pages. Step 2, I give it a full cover cover to cover read. And not just to read, I make notes. Now, I consider writing inside of a pre-printed module to be just a mortal sin, so I love PDFs for this step, but I still print them out in order to do this. The types of notes that I make are all the major plot points, I bullet point those out, I list all the major NPC cast, 
I jot down any ideas that I have of areas that I think might be troublesome or areas that I think can improve. And these notes often look like complete chaos to anyone but me. Some of it is post-it notes, others are just scrawled in the margins of different pages, others are on a separate notepad. Uh, I'll usually put tabs inside the module in order for me to quickly reference certain sections back and forth. Now one thing with making notes is that, well yes, it really does help me reference everything in game and keep me organized. The biggest thing that it does is it helps cement all of these ideas in my mind. A lot of people say that running a pre-made module is so much harder for them than something they wrote themselves, because if they wrote it themselves, they just inherently know it all. So I write down so much of the information to kind of help bridge that gap, cement everything in my mind as if I was the one that had written it. Essentially, you're just rewriting the module in the way that your brain works and works best for you. Modules are going to be written in one of two ways. Either one, they're going to be written in the way that the author's brain works, what works best for them, and that's probably not going to be the way that works best for you. Or two, it's going to be written in a way that's kind of considered generic, the way that's easiest for the most people to read, but at the same time isn't the best way for any one person to read. Also, at any point during my in-depth reading of the module, I might still rule it out as some for some glaring issue that I missed in my initial skim. So it's very easy that during this, they end up getting thrown back into category one as maybe an idea of mine later on, but not worth anything that I want to run. Step three, repeat step two. I give the module two in-depth readings. However, this time, I'm more likely to skip a few parts over that I know are fluff, like the intro, but the meat of it, that's where I read and I make notes and I make any additional changes that I think might be necessary. I will remove pages from the module that I don't feel has any useful information because I don't want to be bogged down with all these pages when I'm trying to run the game. Or if it's information that I'm never going to read again, it was like, well, it was useful once, but I'm never going to have to reference this again. Sometimes if I can't remove the page, I just cross it out with a big black X. That way, if I'm flipping through the module in a session, uh, my eye does not stop there because I know that there is nothing there that I'm going to need in game. Finally, on the day that I run the adventure, I give it one last read. This is usually just skimming all the parts that I know pat, making sure that I really do know them pat, and then carefully reading any parts that uh, I think that I need to pay some extra special attention to when it comes time to run the game. After that, serve and enjoy. Now, okay, pretty simple. All a uh, skim, two full reads, and then a final pre-game read. Now let's go over some of the key areas that I pay special attention to when I'm going through these steps. And since I have several dozen module reviews that I've already posted in different videos like that, for each of these different things, I am going to give at least one example of a module review that I've done where I actually show how I paid special attention to it and made any additional changes or made any corrections or anything like that. That way, if anybody wants an example or a little bit more information, they could then go to that specific module review and see what I'm talking about. And the first area that I want to talk about is maps. I open the door. Okay, well the room is 30 feet deep and 20 feet wide, and on the far side of it is a pair of doors. And I'm going to walk on in there and inspect the left door. Hold on, uh, in this room there's also six bugbears, so uh, roll initiative. Dude, I think we should have noticed that part first. Yeah, sorry about that, but you know, pre-printed modules. I mean, I wouldn't have made this mistake if I wrote it myself, so blame the module. A lot of modules are going to have a dungeon or a warehouse or some other place where all the bad guys are. And go ahead and note where they are on your Game Master map when you're going through all your initial reading. I give an example of how to do this in my Two-Headed Serpent Iceland review. So, let's say that this is your map. Note how many and what kind of bad guys there are during the dungeon or wherever it is. Also, many random dungeon encounter charts, I never remember to use those in the middle of a gaming session. It just it slips my mind, and after the adventure I'm like, oh, I forgot to do all the random encounters. So before the game, I just go ahead and note where some random encounters are going to be on the map, that way that they're just there and they're ready to go. Uh, this method of noting where all the creatures and bad guys are, one, helps me keep track of them, but two, if the PCs are making a lot of noise somewhere, I can look down at my map where everybody's listed and go, oh, well, these people are going to go over there and to investigate what that noise is. Also, some modules might be laid out in a way that isn't really intuitive between the map and the descriptions that are inside the module and what the locations are. 
make notes or whatever way you need to organize that. That way you can look at the map and look back at the book and it's kind of quick as possible and it feels intuitive to you. I give examples of doing this in my reviews for The Derelict and The Star on the Shore. And also make sure that the details in the map all line up with the descriptions of what they are in the module, such as room numberings all being correct or other details that can be seen in my reviews of Madness in London Town and the more recently Tomb of the Lizard King. Another area that often needs work in modules is the initial hook or the initial setup. Most modules sort of give kind of a, a short, cheesy, generic setup because the authors don't know the specifics of your campaign at the time, so they kind of put something there as a placeholder unless you have something better that you can do. So please, feel free to modify whatever the hook is, that way it fits better with your group and your campaign. Secret of Bone Hill and the Village of Hamlet, I give reasons why your characters go to these towns to begin with, such as they're wrapping up a job or they're protecting a shipment or a cargo of some sort and they brought them to the town and once they've delivered the goods and they've gotten paid, the job is done, now the PCs are here and let's see what the adventure next is going to be. Uh, when I did Against the Cult of the Reptile God, I suggest using an NPC connection as a way to bring the player characters into this adventure. Star on the Shore, I completely reworked the intro in order to fit it into our campaign. Dead Light, I gave a false mission that led the PCs into the real surprise that I ambushed them with once they started on what the, the false adventure was. Next up, make the adventure yours. If you read parts of it that you think you can do better than what's in the module, then by all means go for it. The Hollow Earth Expedition, I had several spots that I suggested adding a short combat or just heightening the stakes in a certain scene or just adding completely new scenes that I thought would be fun to have in there. In To Race the Thunder, I added the tension of a rope fairy and I suggested having a side mission where the PCs have to go off and rescue a group of fishermen. Those are all things that don't appear in the original module, but there were ideas that I had that I thought would kind of make the game more fun and more exciting, at least, you know, for my group and hopefully for other groups. Modules are really just a framework of the suggestions, and any of those suggestions can be changed. Some of them are going to be harder to change than others, depends on how deep in the plot they are, but nothing in a module is rigid, so feel free to make it your own. Now, I didn't go into this when I did my video for Secret of Bone Hill, but when we ran this, we did it as a 5th edition conversion, and it took us a full year to do this module. I added a whole lot to it over the course of that year. Uh, there was a hag at one portion, there was a magic minotaur maze, I added a hydra, I even added this weird lost temple that was at the bottom of a pond. The PCs had to like swim down and come up it through the bottom because it was almost like a diving bell on legs. It was pretty cool. Uh, I had a group of goblins that were all inhabiting an abandoned dwarven mine that was up in the mountains. I had an incredible amount to what was already in this module because I thought they improved it for our campaign and my players and I had a lot of fun with it. So please, by all means, make a module your own. If you can come up with a way to improve it, by all means, do it. Check out my review for Black Devil Mountain where I suggested on how to turn that adventure into an Evil Dead movie. And also, read reviews for the module. One of the great things about the internet is there are tons and tons of game reviews out there. Uh, you can read them on DriveThruRPG or Reddit or different Facebook or player groups for whatever type of game it is. Uh, Call of Cthulhu players, because i got a ton of Call of Cthulhu players in my audience. Uh, definitely check out reviews from Alea or go to the Cthulhu Wiki on Yogsathoth.com. Those have been invaluable for me because my standard procedure when I'm looking over a new module or I'm considering it is I'm going to read the reviews and see what other people had to say about it. Now some reviews, probably most, aren't actually going to be all that helpful for you. Some are going to point out or dwell on just tiny little details that don't matter, such as them going off for paragraphs and paragraphs on a typo or some other silly detail that you can just fix in under half a second. But many others are going to point out very legitimate concerns, and that way you can be aware of them and you can prepare for them beforehand. That way nothing kind of jumps out and surprises you in the middle of trying to run the adventure when you find that problem. For me, the most valuable reviews are going to be the first-hand experience reviews. People who played the scenario and can give a first-hand account of what worked and where it didn't and what shined and where it was a little dingy and needed some polishing. But always remember that there are so many factors in running a game, such as the individual personality of the players, let alone the characters, uh, what actions they decide to do, and then the chaos factor of dice. And that can make the experience for one group incredibly different than the experience for another group. 
everyone's experience with identical scenarios is going to be different, and more so if that game master when they ran it was extremely proficient in it, or was literally just reading it for the first time on the page when they entered the room, or if that game master made some changes. So it's another thing to take into account when you're doing first-hand experience module reviews is, well, what sort of game master level proficiency and what sort of players, and just was everybody rolling 20s or was everybody rolling 1s? You know, there's a lot of specific details in there, so you have to still take a lot of it with a grain of salt, including my own, because I've probably had a ton of fun and adventures and people went out and played them and then they were like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Because our individual circumstances and that chaos factor was extremely different. One of the best ways that I've heard modules described is that the module is the script, the game master is the director, and the players are all the cast. If you look at a film like Citizen Kane versus the original script for Citizen Kane, it's almost unrecognizably different. Orson Welles changed so much when he was making that movie that he's now considered the main author of that story. Two of Harrison Ford's most iconic moments in cinema, his shooting the Swordsman and Raiders of the Lost Ark and Han Solo's I Know, were both improvised by him. Neither of those things appear in the original script. Uh, 1974's Murder on the Orient Express is extremely different than 2017's version of that, which both of them vary from the original Agatha Christie novel from which they're based. And I enjoyed all three of them for vastly different reasons. And this is all pales in comparison to the 10 billion different interpretations and versions of all of Shakespeare's plays, with vastly different interpretations by the director, or changes to the plot, or just different performance styles. So you can have a Shakespeare play done a thousand different ways, and modules are kind of like that. So game masters, don't be afraid to run a module, but the keys to running a module are pretty simple. It's preparation, choosing one that works well for you and your group, and to never fear making it different than what shows up on the thing, if, if you feel that you can improve it, or if there's anything in there that you just don't like. Make it your own, but most of all, have fun. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our videos, such as GM Toolbox or Module Reviews, just hit that subscribe button. Until next time, amigos, stay awesome.